exercise one. We begin by starting up ProEngineer. And then go ahead and hit this little button over here on the right hand side, this little arrow. Click on that to reduce the browser. First thing we want to do is go ahead and begin sketching on a plane. What we can do is from the What we do is begin by going to File, New, or you could click on this icon here. And from here you could select Sketch, Part, Assembly. There's many options to select from. What we're looking to do is just draw a part, so select the Part option. If you don't want to use a default template, in this case this default template is set for uh, ANSI inch, you could actually deactivate this and select a different option, but we'll go ahead with the default. Hit OK. And now you'll see you have three planes, front, top, and right. We could go ahead and we could select the front plane. And then up here at the top right hand corner, you'll find Sketch. Go ahead and select that. Now, over to the right, this little dialog box appears. It allows us to select a reference datum. In this case, um, it's defaulting to the right datum, which is fine. We could go ahead and just leave that. But in the event you wanted to re reference something else, you are allowed to select other, other datums. In this case, it will reference our dimensions from that datum. Also in Properties, you'll see the name of the sketch, and so on and so forth. Just go ahead and hit Sketch. Over on the right, you should see the Sketch Tools now available. What we're looking to do to start off is just draw a rectangle. So let's select the Rectangle tool glide up to the origin in the center, click, and drag out a small rectangle. Now you could use the scroll, which is your middle mouse button, actually just scroll forward and you'll zoom up to it. Proe actually does automatically do this as soon as you get past this. If you'll notice if I go back to here to the select tool, um, we get dimensions. Now notice that color. They're like a light gray, these dimensions. That means that they're not completely finished yet. Pro Engineer allows you to add additional dimensions in the event that you don't want to use the ones that are given to you. You'll also see the little V's and H's are relationships that were automatically established. There are two methods of constraints inside Pro Engineer. There's relations and dimensions. And you could toggle between which ones you want to control your geometry best. And a lot of that has to do with something called design intent, which we'll look at in future lessons. Okay, now that we actually have these, our rectangle here, we could go ahead and start typing in different values. In this case, our rectangle, according to the manual, needs to be 5 by 3. So it needs to be 5 inches high. So we could go ahead and type in 5. And you'll see it will automatically zoom up to it for us. Double click on this dimension and turn, change to 3. Hit Enter. And now we can see we're zoomed up nicely here. It's always a good idea to lay out your dimensions as you'd like to see them on your drawing because these will be brought in later on when we do create drawings in the future. So lay them out as you would like to see them. Okay, one other thing that we can do here before we extrude this is we're going to go ahead and add a hole. So we, we could draw it in into this profile. So go ahead and select the circle tool and click and drag out a circle up in the upper left hand corner of our box and hit the select tool. You'll notice that when the dimensions are changed they become uh, what they uh, they're actually become kind of hardened in other words they're more sol solid in terms of uh, versus these light gray ones meaning that these could be changed and manipulated um, or removed and replaced with other dimensions just by clicking and adding a new dimension or relationship. But in this case, we want to keep these because they're actually just in the right spot. So we'll make that one inch by one inch to locate it. Just click on the dimensions. And the whole size is going to be 0.75. Again, lay the dimensions out how you'd like to see them for a drawing. And now we could go ahead and extrude this. Now before we do that, over on the sketch tools here, you'll find a little button here on the right. This is to accept the current sketch the way it is. So just hit the little check mark. Now you'll see that the solid tools appear. And the first one here on the lower right is the extrude button. Go ahead and select extrude. Now you have the ribbon up at the top here that allows you to 
to select different things. You could actually um, make this a surface. And if we rotate it, you can see this, a set of surfaces that it's applying. Or you can make it a solid. There's other options too that we'll look at, like thicken and so on. But in this case, um, we're going to go ahead and just keep it at this blind depth here. And we could type in an explicit value, in this case 0.5, or half inch. Now here's a reverse switch to reverse the extrusion direction. And over here is a thin feature, or th thickened sketch. And that's a little bit different than a surface that actually adds thickness to it. We could click on that, and you could see you could type in a value for a different thickness. But we'll turn that off. Over to the right, you'll see a green check mark. Uh, th this is also the little eyeglasses are preview, which it's already checked on, which is fine. If it's not checked on, go ahead and check it on. And hit the green check mark to apply. Okay. Now, if you want, you could actually deactivate some of these tools up here, like for the datums and some of the uh, lines and WCSs and things like that, and just keep it rather basic to clean up the environment a little bit makes it a little bit easier to work with. Now what we want to do next is we want to sketch on this front surface. So go ahead and select the surface, click on it two times until it turns this pink color. Then you could select the sketch tool. Again it will bring us into this mode and we get the option to select a, surface, a, a reference datum. In this case we'll stick with the right datum again and we'll hit uh, sketch. There is a flip direction too if you want to flip to the other side. But let's go ahead and just hit sketch. Now take the rectangle tool again and glide up at the lower left hand corner. Click and drag on a rectangle. Now you'll notice you do not automatically get a relationship to the edge here. That's okay. Go ahead and uh, get it pretty close and click to drop it. Now there's actually a relationship tool, a constraint. So we could actually import a constraint by selecting this and we could um, you'll get this constraint toolbar over here. What we want to do is make coincident and we could select our point here and the edge and it will automatically constrain that. Over here was on the right hand side you see this option once you make the selections and you see it snap to it just hit OK and you could hit close here now under constraint because you've just added a constraint to that. One last thing is let's change this dimension to 1.5. And we're ready to extrude once again. So now we have to hit the check mark over here in the lower right. And we could go to extrude. And again, type in 0.5. There are options if you right click on geometry. You have to hold down for a couple seconds before these things appear, but there's remove material. So if you want to remove material instead of add, you could use that. Again, the surface option is there, thicken sketch, flip direction. A lot of these things were there earlier. Uh, they're up here as well on the ribbon. So go ahead and hit the green check mark to apply. And that finishes up exercise one.